your copy of God's Word, turning to me to Romans chapter 10. Look at me briefly, verses 1 through 4. Romans chapter number 10. Several weeks ago, there was a young woman by the name of Clark who got up like any other morning and made her way to work. She had only been at work for a few hours before the phone rang. She received the call from her babysitter informing her that her one-year-old baby had become very ill and was running a field. Without hesitation, Claudia leaped up from her desk, grabbed her purse and her car keys, rushed into her supervisor's office informing her supervisor that she had a family emergency that required her immediate attention. Receiving the okay from her supervisor to go ahead and see about her business, Claudia jumped into her vehicle and rushed to a local pharmacy. Claudia arrived at the pharmacy. She leaped out of her car, ran into the pharmacy to pick up some medication to treat her sick baby. The rushing 
mercy through the aisles of the pharmacy. After encouraging the cashier to hurry up, Claudia made her way back to her car only to find that she had locked her keys inside of her car. Feeling a sense of panic, Claudia picked up the phone and called her babysitter, informing her that she was on her way as soon as she could, but she had locked her keys in a car. The babysitter said, Miss Claudia, won't you look around and see if you can find a clothes hanger? Desperate. For any solution to the dilemma that she was in, Miss Claudia said, I'll call you back and began to survey the parking lot for a clothes hand. And to her surprise, she found a rusty clothes hanger that she assumed to belong to somebody else who had locked their keys in their car. Claudia has the clothes hanger standing at her door before she realizes that I have no idea what to do with this clothes hanger. So without hesitation, because Claudia was a good Christian woman, she closed her eyes and said a brief prayer, Lord, send me some help. Oh! 
of amnesia in which we have forgotten that the only reason that you are always you are right now and that you have what you have is because somebody prayed for you when you ain't have enough sense to kneel down and pray for yourself. Have what you have because somebody prayed for you when you were lost and if you got good sin when you see somebody
change her direction, not on the outside, but to change your direction on the inside. Thought I would have a witness then. Glad I brought her on. Matthew chapter number three, particularly verses seven through ten. There we find John the Baptist baptizing in the Jordan River, preaching his message of repentance. But John the Baptist sees some Pharisees and some Sadducees coming down to his baptism. And John says, wait a minute. Who told you about my message? John tells the Pharisees and the Sadducees to go and show some signs of repentance. Signs of repentance. And don't think for a moment that you can say, I'm Abraham's seed. That's my sign of repentance. John the Baptist said, no, don't show me outward signs. But I need to see something changing on the inside. Yeah, That's the sermon in itself. Because church today has become so external that we are no internally good. We want to control how people look on the outside and can care less what's going on on the inside. But John told Show me some signs of repentance. Don't just change clothes, change your attitude. Don't just change how you look on the outside, change the way you think on the inside. Show me some signs of repentance. Paul says, I pray that Israel will change their mind. Israel was God's chosen people. They knew God. They dressed like God's people. They talked like God's people. They lived where God's people were supposed to live. On Saturdays and Sunday, you can find them in the temple where God's people were supposed to be. But the problem is, even though they looked, talked, act, smell, faith like God's people, they were not God's people. I can see the 21st century church following in the footsteps of Israel. We look like God's people, talk like God's people, walk like God's people. On Sundays you can catch us in the place where God's people meet. On Wednesdays you can catch us in the place where God's people meet. We sing in the choir like God's people. We preach in pulpits like God's people. Sunday school lessons like God's people. But I want to know, are you just God's person on the outside or are you God's people down on the inside? Your Bible says that God searches the heart. God don't care nothing about the outfit you got on, whether you wear a robe, suit, or your gym shirt. He want to know, has your heart been changed? Paul says, my prayer, my heart's desire is that my people would change their mind. In verses 2 and 3, Paul explains the reason for his prayer. Verse 2, Paul says, for I testify about Israel, they have a zeal for God. Did you hear that? They have a zeal for God, but their zeal for God is not in accordance with knowledge. I testify, Paul's word testify there means to be a character witness. Paul says, 
I'm speaking up because I know them. I, I, I didn't been where they are. I, I didn't hung out with them. We tight like that. I, I know them. I can speak on their behalf. And because I know them, let me testify that they have a zeal for God.
But for you people that need some help, then come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. What's so good about your poetry that she gets to look at it every time she look in the mirror? But my poetry, she only gets to look at it when she goes in the icebox. You went back to my mama, mama, why did you put my portrait on the refrigerator and kiss portrait on the Mother said it was probably because he painted with my favorite colors. Did you hear it? They both painted the same thing. But he did what was pleasing in the eyesight of God, while the other one did what was pleasing in the eyesight of himself. If you want God's attention, do what is pleasing in the eyesight of God, which is faith in Jesus Christ. Don't just proclaim your own self-righteousness so that you can feel good about yourself.
Revelation chapter 22, somewhere around verse 13, Jesus says this, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. Salvation starts with me. Don't miss an 
opportunity to pray for somebody who is lost. Because nobody missed an opportunity to pray. May God bless you. May God bless you. Beautiful thing.